Welcome to my channel. Today I will share Sam's story with everyone. Sam's wife cheated on him, she had a sexual relationship with her boss. Please stay tuned to our channel as we are about to begin the narration. My name is Sam, and I am 31 years old, working as a taxi driver. Being a taxi driver used to be a decent profession in the early years. However, with the increasing popularity of private cars and the rise of ride-sharing services in recent years, the days of taxi drivers have become tougher. I can barely make ends meet, just enough to feed myself, but it is impossible to support a family solely by driving a taxi. The lack of success in my career does not overshadow the sparkle of my marriage, all thanks to me marrying a beautiful and attractive wife. Many fellow drivers envy me, but some people say that having a too beautiful wife in our line of work may not necessarily be a good thing. Due to long hours of driving and sitting, many drivers face symptoms such as back pain and prostate discomfort, which seriously affect their performance in bed. In addition, with unstable income and an unglamorous job, wives are more likely to be unfaithful. I look down upon these people in my heart, thinking that they are just envious and jealous, sour grapes. My wife Alice and I share a deep love, which can withstand any test. Moreover, I am still young, and I have no issues in that department, even more so than peers my age. However, a discovery a few days ago changed my perspective. One evening at 8 o'clock, when I returned home, I found that my wife had already returned from a business trip. She was sleeping in bed, breathing evenly, in a deep slumber. She was still wearing her black silk professional outfit, her hair tied up, and her bag thrown on the bedside table. But I noticed something unusual, my wife is a saleswoman who often goes on business trips. She is a woman with slight cleanliness habits, no matter how late and tired she is when she comes home, she would always take a shower and change into pajamas before going to bed. This time, she acted out of character and did not even change out of her work clothes. My wife, sound asleep, pouted her rosy lips, her body in the black silk outfit showcasing her charming figure. I swallowed, unable to control the affection in my heart, and lay down beside my wife's jade-like back, my hands around her armpits, grabbing the place that captivated me. The scent of my wife's body filled my nostrils as I nibbled at her neck. My wife was awakened by my actions, but she did not open her eyes, instinctively grabbing my hand that was causing trouble. Honey, stop messing around, I am very tired. I was startled, and rationality regained control. My wife's fatigue did not seem fake, and I harshly scolded myself for only seeking to satisfy my animalistic desires, disregarding my wife's feelings. In the early days of our marriage, my wife and I had sex almost every week. As time went on, our intimate life became less frequent, to the point that we rarely have it once a month now. Whenever I wanted it. My wife would say she was on her period or too tired from work. I am a healthy, normal man, but I cannot force my wife to do it against her will. I once chatted with a friend, using the excuse of finding a friend, and spoke to fellow drivers. Faced with a situation like this, they would spend a couple of hundred dollars to find other women to fulfill their desires. Drivers who are out and about on the streets of the city all year round know many affordable and good places. However, I have never been. I am a very traditional man at heart. Seeking pleasure outside the marriage is no different from cheating in my eyes. Returning to the room once more, I took a basin of hot water and changed my wife's clothes, giving her a simple wash. While wiping my wife's face, my elbow accidentally knocked her bag off the bedside table. Her bag fell to the ground, and the items inside scattered everywhere. Lipstick, makeup, sunscreen, wet wipes, and more. A woman's bag is like Doryman's magic pocket, you never know how many things are inside. Just then, I picked up a square plastic bag. Before picking it up, I thought it was a wet wipe, but the silky feeling in my hand made me realize something was wrong. Inside seemed to be rubber film, 
and after reading the words on the packaging clearly, my body stiffened. How could there be condoms in my wife's bag? I opened the bedside drawer, and there were exactly as many condoms inside as I expected. My initial reaction was that my wife was seeing someone else. The nameless anger rose from my heart. And I was about to pull my wife up to ask her clearly. But I suddenly thought that it might be rash to suspect my wife of cheating based solely on the condoms in her bag. What if she casually took them from a hotel room, or if a colleague played a prank on her and placed them in her bag, or maybe she was unsatisfied with the styles at home and wanted to switch to a different brand? With these thoughts in mind, I retracted my hand that was hanging in the air. Lying on the bed in a daze, unable to fall asleep at all, my mind was still pondering the incident with the condoms. Once suspicion arises, it is hard to disappear without a trace. I shifted my gaze to my wife's phone, if she really had something going on, there should be some clues on her phone. So, I took my wife's phone from under her pillow. To my surprise, my wife's phone was not password protected, and I easily opened the screen. I found my wife's WhatsApp chat records and started examining them one by one. After finishing, I breathed a sigh of relief as there were no abnormal contact names or chat records with the opposite sex. Over the next few days, I paid close attention to my wife's actions. Everything seemed normal, she wasn't going on business trips or staying out late at night, and she would promptly respond to calls and WhatsApp messages. My frequent contact attempts even led my wife to criticize me for being too talkative. Just when I had abandoned all suspicions, I received a mysterious text message. At that time, I had just dropped off a passenger at their destination. And I picked up my phone to check the time, only to receive a text message. The message contained only a few words, your wife is cheating. In the past, upon receiving such messages, I would have dismissed them as scams or even replied with a harsh comment. However, considering the recent incident with the condoms in my wife's bag, I replied to the message immediately, who are you? What do you want? The person on the other end responded with, if you don't believe it, go to the Marriott Hotel on Friendship Road. When I inquired further, there was no reply. To verify the authenticity of the message, the next course of action was simple, go directly to the location provided. Shifting the gear and accelerating, I raced towards the hotel. Ten minutes later, I parked my car on the side of the road in front of the Marriott Hotel, and at that moment, my phone received another text, keep an eye on the hotel entrance. This revelation startled me, why did I receive a message from the person just as I arrived? It signaled that the person was not only nearby but also had full knowledge of my actions. Who was this person? Why were they texting me? With no time to think about these questions, I focused my attention on the hotel entrance, fearing that I might miss a critical moment. A few minutes later, a slim figure in OL dress emerged from the hotel entrance. I immediately recognized her as my wife Alice and the man accompanying her was a middle-aged man who had gained weight. The middle-aged man reached out and groped my wife's perky behind, causing her to look around nervously before playfully twisting against the man's arm. Their gestures and intensity were like those between lovers. With trembling hands, I dialed my wife's number. My wife answered the call right in front of me and walked to a quiet corner. Honey, is there something you need? She said. Wife, I miss you. Where are you? I feigned calmness, suppressing my anger. Where else could I be, except at the office? I'm busy, the boss needs me. After her reply, my wife hung up. I gripped the phone, veins popping in my hands, and listened to the beeping from the other end. At that moment, I finally accepted the reality of my wife's infidelity. Without a doubt, the middle-aged man following her was her illicit lover. Watching them drive away in a black SUV, I felt not rage as I had expected but a tangible sense of hate. 
I would make this adulterous couple pay the price. But before that, I had to find the mysterious person who had called me. Amidst my sadness, I tried dialing the number, and the person answered promptly, a woman with a pleasant voice. After the call connected, I first asked, who are you? The woman replied, if you want to know the answer, come inside the hotel. I opened the car door and walked towards the hotel entrance. Upon entering, I found a spacious lobby with an elevator pathway on the left for guests going upstairs and a lounge area on the right with leather sofas. People were moving about in the lobby, and just as I was about to make a call, I noticed a beautiful and generously proportioned woman in a black dress sitting in a corner of the lounge area, wearing sunglasses and waving at me. Clad in a black dress, exuding an elegant charm, her mature demeanor was something Alice did not possess. If Alice was a fresh grape, she was a ripe peach. I had never anticipated that the woman who called me would be so alluring. For a moment, I almost forgot why I was there. Regaining my senses, I asked her, may I ask who you are? Let's sit down and talk, the woman pointed to the sofa opposite her and said. My name is Elizabeth. And I know you have many questions. Once you hear me out, you will understand, she continued. The man who came to the hotel with your wife is David. He is my husband and also the boss of your wife's company. Your wife is the most beautiful saleswoman in the company, naturally gaining favor. David took advantage of his position to frequently go on business trips with your wife. Over time, they developed a relationship, and this matter has been circulating within the company for a long time. Only the two of us were kept in the dark. So it turned out that my wife was involved with the boss of the company. No wonder she had condoms in her bag during business trips, she was definitely preparing for her boss. It was infuriating that I had made excuses when I found the condoms, and thinking about my wife being intimate with another man made me seethe with anger. After allowing me to absorb the information, Elizabeth continued, I knew about this occurrence half a month earlier, and during this time, I have been gathering evidence of their affair and information about you. That may not be the case. I discovered the condoms in Alice's bag last month. I then told Elizabeth about finding the condoms in Alice's bag that day. Elizabeth looked at me with disbelief and asked, you actually thought she had prepared them for you? I can't decide if you are audacious or just foolish. I didn't dwell on this issue and instead asked her, what do you plan to do now? Elizabeth appeared to be a resourceful and strong-willed woman. She had gone to great lengths to involve me in this scenario, indicating that she must have further plans. Of course, we will seek revenge on this adulterous couple, Elizabeth said, looking at me. Are you okay with me calling your wife that? You are not wrong, I have no objections, I replied. I then asked her, but how do you plan to seek revenge on them? Unconsciously, I treated her as the one in charge. There was a unique charm about this woman elegant, confident, and beautiful. I couldn't believe that someone like her, who possessed such qualities, would resort to cheating. Elizabeth said, first, we must create an opportunity for this pair of adulterers. What? You want to give them a chance? I instinctively raised my voice in disbelief. Did I not already feel enough humiliation from wearing the green hat? Pedestrians in the hotel lobby turned to look at me prompting me to quickly lower my head and sit back down on the sofa. Don't worry, let me explain. They have already had countless affairs. If we don't give them a chance, how will we catch them in the act? Also, I have a specially prepared bottle of chili oil made from the spiciest chilies in the world. I want you to apply this chili oil to the condoms they use. When this chili oil first comes into contact with the skin, it won't cause any immediate sensation, but the aftereffect is potent enough to cause them excruciating pain. Elizabeth handed me a small glass bottle from her bag. 
Will this cause them harm? I asked, concerned. No, other than extreme pain, it won't harm their bodies. Elizabeth replied. Watching the liquid in the glass bottle, which looked like cooking oil, I couldn't help but marvel at its intensity. Also, what do you think of me? Elizabeth removed her sunglasses, her captivating eyes holding my gaze, gracefully exuding charm. Eyes are the windows to the soul, and for a beautiful woman, expressive eyes can significantly enhance her appeal. I didn't understand Elizabeth's intention and truthfully answered her question, you are impressive and beautiful. I have one more thing to tell you today, which is also the second method of revenge against that pair of adulterers. What method? I still couldn't comprehend. Elizabeth's next answer completely challenged my preconceptions. I have already booked a room here. I will seduce Alice's husband, and you will engage with David's wife. Isn't this a perfect method of revenge? I gazed at the stunning woman before me in disbelief, astonished by her vengeful scheme. It was evident how deeply she resented David. If she was simply feeling lonely and seeking solace from a man, there were plenty of men on the street better than me. With Elizabeth's beauty, countless men would flock to her with just a beckoning gesture. Honestly, her proposal was exhilarating, especially given how exceptional the woman involved was. Let's go, Elizabeth stood up first, emitting a fragrant breeze, and walked towards the elevator pathway. Dumbfounded, I followed her and got into the elevator. As the door opened, Elizabeth pressed me against the wall, using her heels to close the door. I'll take a shower first. I had just got out of the taxi, still smelling of sweat, worried that Elizabeth might find it off-putting. Finish up and then you can shower, Elizabeth said, silencing me with her red lips. Two hours later, Elizabeth lay in my arms, resembling a docile cat. After taking a shower and putting on my pants, I waved goodbye to Elizabeth. Returning home at 8 o'clock, Alice was sitting in the living room watching TV. Ignoring her, I went to the bathroom to freshen up, preparing to sleep early. After exhausting myself with Elizabeth in the afternoon and spending the rest of the day driving a taxi, I was beyond fatigued. I lay on the bed playing with my phone when Alice walked in, lying down next to me. Honey, are you mad at me? I know I've been neglecting you lately, but I'm genuinely very busy. I wanted to ask her if she was busy sleeping with her boss, but I knew it wasn't the right time to confront her. Oh, what's this? Suddenly, Alice pointed at my neck. Alarmed, I recalled the intense moment with Elizabeth when she had seemingly sucked on my neck. What's wrong? Help me check. I was driving a passenger to the countryside today, and my neck feels itchy, I quickly made up an excuse. As expected, Alice didn't probe further, it must be a mosquito bite. In the following days, I pretended not to have discovered Alice's secret and continued with my daily routine, eagerly awaiting Elizabeth's next contact. Finally, the day arrived. At three o'clock in the afternoon, I received a call from Elizabeth. It's time, tomorrow at 7.30 p.m., come to room 1302 at the Four Seasons Hotel. That evening, Alice told me that she would be going on a business trip the next day. Prepared for this, I nodded in response. Late at night, after confirming that Alice was sound asleep, I stealthily opened her bag. The box of condoms was still inside. I took the condoms to the guest room, carefully extracted the chili oil with a syringe, pierced the condom packets, injected the chili oil inside, and massaged them to ensure even distribution. After injecting the chili oil into each condom, a smirk appeared on my face, as if anticipating the pain of the adulterers during their moments of intimacy. The next day, I arrived at the hotel as instructed. Elizabeth had just finished showering and was blow-drying her hair. It's still early, go take a shower. Their room is next door, and they should arrive in about 10 minutes. 
Instructing me to shower upon arrival, was Elizabeth looking to reignite old flames? However, ten minutes wasn't enough time for me. I quickly took a shower in the bathroom. By then, Elizabeth was already lying on the bed in sexy lingerie, beckoning me to join her. Rushing to get under the covers, Elizabeth stopped my advances, and as I looked at her in confusion, she held my hands, stopping me from further action. To my puzzlement, Elizabeth pressed a button on the remote control to turn on the TV. The screen displayed a room that resembled a hotel's bedroom, with the layout and decor identical to our room. Elizabeth explained, this is the live monitor of the adjacent room. Wait a few more minutes, and we will soon witness quite a show. I will provide you with a recording afterward. Hearing Elizabeth's words, I was impressed by her meticulous planning and superior tactics. Not only did she have a keen understanding of everyone's whereabouts, but her plans were also impeccably thorough. Fortunately, we were not enemies. I silently stared at the screen, and after a few minutes, a faint door opening sound was heard on the television. Subsequently, a man and a woman entered the room and fell onto the bedsheets in an embrace. Perhaps for the sake of convenience, Alice was wearing a sexy tank top and shorts, revealing her slender, beautiful legs. Her face was adorned with elaborate makeup, more intense than her usual work appearance, indicating the significance she attached to her date with the boss. David, on the other hand, maintained his usual appearance as a successful professional, dress shirt, trousers, leather shoes, glasses, a watch, and a small leather bag. In contrast to Alice's attire, David's clothing seemed overly complex. Alice had to unbutton his shirt and loosen his belt. However, Alice patiently and attentively helped David undress. The two of them quickly became intimate, entwining in each other's arms. The stark contrast between the youthful and attractive Alice and the aging. Out of shape David was apparent. What was even more shocking was that due to David's middle age, his performance was lackluster. Surprisingly, Alice did not seem to mind and resorted to a particular method that I too had long sought, helping him rekindle his vigor. While I had known of Alice's extramarital behavior, witnessing her shameful actions with my own eyes filled me with intense anger. That despicable woman deserved to die, along with her boss, David. The saying goes that the hatred of having a wife snatched away cannot be shared with the heavens. I clenched my fists, burning with an overwhelming desire to barge into the adjacent room and kill them myself. However, rationality prevailed, reminding me that such an act, while relieving my anger, would only bring harm and no benefit. Looking to vent my anger, I turned my gaze to the determined Elizabeth in my arms. Just like me, Elizabeth's eyes reflected deep-seated resentment. Sensing my burning gaze, Elizabeth met my eyes, and flames flickered between us. I forcefully pushed Elizabeth down, replicating the heightened passion displayed in the video, creating a more intense scene in the room next door. It was an incredibly cathartic release. At that moment, Elizabeth was no longer the elegant and noble beauty I knew her as, she had become the wife of my enemy in my eyes. My mind was consumed with thoughts of revenge, to the extent that I acted without reservation. To my surprise, Elizabeth matched my intensity, surpassing Alice by far. Meanwhile, in the adjacent room, they were just finishing their preliminary preparations and about to implement safety measures. Nearly missing the thrilling climax, I focused intently on the screen, witnessing Alice taking out a condom from her bag. Is everything done? Elizabeth asked me. I nodded and replied, yes, everything is taken care of. Undoubtedly, Alice was unaware as she grabbed the special condom containing chili oil that I had prepared. After taking the necessary precautions, they engaged in their pleasure. Ah! A piercing scream from the television screen jolted me out of my reverie. David was clutching his lower body in agony, 
rolling on the bed and screaming in pain, while Alice, bewildered, tried to assess his condition only to be kicked off the bed by David's frantic struggles. Ah! Another scream followed as Alice began experiencing symptoms, and the cries of agony from the adjacent room continued to echo. As I listened to the agonized screams from the neighboring room, a sense of satisfaction welled up within me. This method of retaliation, which causes extreme pain without inflicting serious injury, was truly ingenious. Being the boss, David was the first to notice something was wrong, rushing into the bathroom to alleviate the pain with cold water. Following suit, Alice struggled to the bathroom, propping herself up and running after David. Upon emerging from the bathroom, their pain had somewhat subsided. David, clutching his body, pointed at Alice and angrily asked, What the hell is going on? Is this how you seek excitement? Alice tearfully shook her head, saying, I really don't know. Quit standing there, call an ambulance. David shouted. After the ambulance arrived, both of them were taken away by the paramedics. The plan for today concluded perfectly, and Elizabeth asked me to head back while she handled the aftermath. Upon arriving home, I received an edited video on my phone, depicting the affair between Alice and David. With this solid evidence in hand, I could finally confront Alice. It was just past nine o'clock when I arrived home. Unable to sleep, I made myself a simple meal of vegetable egg noodles in the kitchen and watched TV while waiting for Alice to return. Nearly two hours later, Alice finally came home. Her face was pale, and she appeared weak and feeble, despite her efforts to conceal it. Observing her crippling pain, I suppressed any sense of amusement and asked, pretending concern, what's wrong? Are you feeling unwell? Alice weakly waved me off, saying, I'm fine, I just need to rest. However, I had no intention of letting her off the hook. Blocking her path, I said, don't rush, there's something we need to discuss. Annoyed, Alice responded, let's talk about it tomorrow. I need to address this now. You just got back from cheating, and you still dare to act so tough. Alice, you have some nerve. After enduring for several days, the time had come for me to confront her directly without giving her a chance to evade the issue. Seeing the panic in Alice's eyes after my words, she quickly tried to deny it, feigning composure. Look at the video I sent you, I reminded her. I had already sent the video of her affair to her phone before she arrived home. After watching the video, Alice's complexion changed multiple times, and she finally abandoned her charade, admitting, now that you know, I'll tell you the truth. How else do female salespeople achieve success without relying on their bodies? How else do they get promotions and pay raises? You are naive and suspicious. Her shameless defiance infuriated me, and I retorted, so, you're proud of yourself? I refuse to believe that all women behave like you. You're just making excuses for your infidelity. If I don't do this, how will I make money? Your meager salary isn't enough for me to buy cosmetics. You could have played dumb, but instead, you dragged this out, making yourself miserable. I was shocked by Alice's shamelessness and raised my hand to give her a firm slap. Unflinching, Alice stood her ground, goading me to strike her. I won't dirty my hands by hitting you. Besides, I've already taught you both a lesson through the chili oil. I withdrew my hand, concerned that Alice might provoke me into hitting her to paint me as an abusive man. Yet, I couldn't bear to see her smug face, so I deliberately disclosed that it was me who tampered with the condoms. You did this? I suspected something was wrong with that condom. Sam, are you insane? Alice couldn't contain her calm anymore and charged at me, unleashing a flurry of punches and kicks. Because of that condom, she had been reprimanded by David all the way, aggravating his pre-existing shortcomings. However, she was no match for me. 
I simply pushed her away, and she fell to the ground, disheveled. Divorce. I want a divorce. Alice screamed in a frantic manner. Surprisingly, it was Alice who first asked for a divorce. If I had known the chili oil was so effective, I would have used more. After her divorce request, Alice explained that she still had important work to finish and requested a week to complete her tasks before cooperating with divorce proceedings. Although hesitant, she voluntarily proposed a property settlement wherein she would relinquish the house and car, leaving both to me. However, the savings in her bank card would remain hers. Previously, all household finances had been managed by Alice, with necessary expenses paid from my income and any leftover money transferred to her bank account. This amount was not substantial, just tens of thousands, as we were both ordinary workers. Her proposition regarding property division caught me off guard, I had expected her to contest the house and car, but she willingly surrendered them. This was an extremely favorable distribution for me. Despite possessing concrete evidence of her infidelity, if the matter were to reach the courts, the divorce would most likely proceed smoothly. However, to make her leave with nothing legally was not feasible unless she willingly relinquished it. If the judgment came down, she would definitely receive more than she currently had. I agreed to her conditions. And after Alice packed her belongings, she voluntarily moved out of the house. In the empty room, I was left alone, feeling lost and forlorn. In the following days, I quit my job at the company. Since I had decided to divorce, I no longer wanted to continue driving a taxi. I spent my days in a daze, drinking, and getting drunk with friends at night and sleeping until midday. It wasn't until the third day after Alice moved out that my phone rang, waking me up. It was Elizabeth calling. She asked where I was, and I replied that I was still at home sleeping. Irritated by her interruption of my dreams, I impatiently asked, isn't she just at work? Work, my a asterisk asterisk, Alice is transferring assets that belong to both of you, Elizabeth shouted over the phone. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, I quickly got out of bed, made arrangements to meet, and hung up. I hurried to a cafe to meet Elizabeth, who was waiting in a light purple dress. Without admiring her beauty, I sat down and asked, what did you mean on the phone? Instead of directly answering my question, Elizabeth asked, have you never suspected Alice's income these past years? After a moment of recollection, I replied, I have suspected. She has complained to me before about how sales jobs are unreliable and that if she doesn't meet targets, she only gets a basic salary. In reality, she has consistently been receiving a basic salary. Perhaps this is why she resorted to selling her body for sales resources. But how does that relate to what you said? I inquired, puzzled. Elizabeth explained. It does because if I tell you that Alice's sales performance has always been good and she had been clinging to David for the past three years, how could she only be receiving a basic salary? Everything was just a facade to deceive you. But I know her monthly salary, it's usually around three to four thousand, occasionally six to seven thousand. It's not enough to cover her monthly expenses, and she often needs my financial support, I added. That's because she and David split her income into two parts. The visible income appearing as salary is deposited into her account, only a few thousand each month. The bulk of her income, such as bonuses and commissions, was paid into her brother's account in the form of goods payments, totaling over a million in the past few years Elizabeth disclosed. I sat in stunned silence after hearing Elizabeth's words. No wonder Alice readily agreed to the divorce and volunteered to give up the house and car. The house we currently owned was purchased with a loan I took out before marriage, a small two-bedroom apartment of less than 100 square meters. Even when including the domestically produced car we had owned for a few years, their total value was less than a million. Far less than the over a million in cash Alice had acquired. 
What terrified me even more was that Alice's actions indicated that she had long considered divorce and had strategically planned ahead. I sat dejectedly in my chair, asking Elizabeth how she discovered Alice's asset transfer. Elizabeth revealed that she was a shareholder in David's company, which she had co-established using her connections and funds. Her shareholding wasn't any less than David's. Unexpectedly, after the company expanded, David inflated his ego to the extent of committing infidelity within his marriage and coercing subordinates. After gathering evidence of David's unfaithfulness, Elizabeth ousted him from the company and conducted a detailed audit. This led to the discovery of Alice's secret. Over the past few days, while claiming to be busy at work, Alice had been processing the asset transfer. Once the transfer was finalized, she planned to proceed with the divorce. Elizabeth handed me a document containing evidence of Alice's asset transfer and the contact information of the lawyer she recommended. I stood up to thank Elizabeth solemnly, grateful for knowing her. Without the text message she had sent me, I might still have been manipulated by Alice. How would you like to thank me? Elizabeth asked me with a playful smile. By marrying you, I replied. After leaving the cafe, I immediately called Alice, then contacted the lawyer recommended by Elizabeth. In the presence of the lawyer, I presented the evidence of Alice's asset transfer, to which she offered no rebuttal, remaining silent throughout. Ultimately, I chose not to mediate with her and instead proceeded to sue her in court, where a fair judgment was made. While I forewent Alice's money, she wouldn't receive a single penny of mine. After the court ruling, the marriage between Alice and me came to a close. Several days later, I met with Elizabeth again. Both of us had returned to single life, and we celebrated joyfully. After our activities, Elizabeth asked if I wanted to be with her. Despite the immense temptation, I declined, realizing that I couldn't handle a woman like her. To be honest, I already had a psychological shadow when it came to marriage.